All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're about a minute to the start time, less than a minute. We will see how many people we get logged in, tuned in for our vegetable medley in pen and watercolor. I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Let me know in the live chat, maybe where you guys are from, maybe if this is your very first watercolor or your first tutorial with Artist Palette Germ Region, or let me know anything at all. Um, maybe it's your birthday today. Let me know that. Hi, Jared. Jared's in Brantford. We live really close, Jared. I'm in London, but I bet you knew that already. I'm in London, Ontario in Canada. My name is Chris. Maybe, maybe some of you don't know me. Chris from Canada. Hello to Lisa. Hello to A. Brown in Atlanta. It's gonna be so much fun to draw and paint these. Yes, C. Blanton, agreed. Um, yeah, so my name is Chris. I'm in Canada, so it's not Thanksgiving here, but I'm sure a number of us are in the States and it is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. Maybe you've just finished dinner, everything's all tidied up, and now you're sitting down to enjoy a relaxing evening of painting. And I thought the veggies would be nice on Thanksgiving. We're, we're giving thanks for the, the bounty of nature, right? Different veggies, different root vegetables, the bounty of nature. Maybe you've eaten some of these tonight. Maybe some carrots, maybe some asparagus, some, this is a turnip, but maybe like rutabaga, something along those lines. Cucumber, does that go with Thanksgiving? Maybe not so much, but perhaps. Maybe a salad, a nice cucumber salad. All right, hello to Joanne. Hello to Sandy in Australia. Good morning, Sandy. Awesome. Yes, Jared, we had Thanksgiving in October because we're Canadians, right? All right, it is, it is two minutes after the start time. We will get started on our beautiful veggies. Now, remember that this is live, but you can still hit pause. You can still rewind. That is a feature of the live feed. And also if you're watching this in the future, after we've already gone live, of course you could still pause it and rewind and fast forward all my droning on and on to suit your pace. Go at your own pace. Don't hesitate to hit the pause, do a little extra work at your own pace and then catch up with us. All right, so let's do supplies before we actually get started. So here's, here's the two examples. I'm just gonna pop them over here for a sec. Now you will notice that in the examples I have beautiful musical notes in the background. I just thought it's like a cool design element um, rather than just use, you know, boring white paper. It is optional. I'll show you what I do to get that musical note paper. I go to thrift stores, I go to used bookstores, and I look for books of sheet music. So I found this one. I literally had my husband cut the spine right off. He just cut the spine off, so it's all loose sheets. Favorite songs of the 90s. And when I saw the title, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. They mean the 1890s, because I started looking at these titles. I'm like, those aren't songs from the 90s. Literally means that. 1890s I loved it I had to buy it right away <laughs> there's some there's some bangers in here um you know <laughs> who threw the overalls in Mistress Murphy's chowder <laughs> I can't make that up that's a song <laughs> when you were sweet 16 okay that sounds more more classic um <laughs> she was bred in old Kentucky <laughs> I just laugh every time I read some of these titles. So search your local thrift stores or used bookstores, rummage sales, um, 
garage sales, church bazaars, and find some sheet music books and just really have fun with, look at this, in the good old summertime. That's a true classic. I think uh, Meet Me in St. Louis is also in here. Love that one. That one will get stuck in my head. So this is the paper I'm using today. It is not watercolor paper. It is thin, normal paper. Um, these are going to get a little bit warped, a little bit wiggly as I work on them. So we're just going to be very gentle, careful with this thinner paper. Of course, you don't have to use sheet music. You can use just watercolor paper. I use this brand, this type a lot. You could use any size. Um, um, you could use mixed media paper. If you don't have watercolor paper specifically, mixed media would be okay. So I'm going to select a couple from this. Let's see. That one looks pretty good. Something with not too many notes on it. Oh, a gypsy love song. I'm going to choose another one. Um, I mean, that was not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Lots more for later. Get this on here. Keep it tidy. All right. So because I am using a thinner non-watercolor paper, I'm just going to be very gentle when I'm actually applying the watercolors. I'm not going to be like rubbing really hard with my paintbrush. I'm not going to do too many layers. I'm just going to do like two layers maximum. I wouldn't want the paper to start pilling, um, becoming mush, getting holes in it. So I'm definitely going to be very gentle with my watercolors when we get to the watercolor portion. Um, but first we are going to draw draw our veggies. I've got, oh, I've got other supplies here. Pencil and eraser. Good to have. And then I have many different kinds of pens. Let me scrounge up some different kinds here. Oh, this one, this one, oh, this one. I've got so many different pens. Waterproof pen is what you would like to have because we're adding paint afterward. Um, so here's some of my favorites. Sharpie brand. Sharpie puts out very thin pens. Here's some more Sharpie pens. Um, I'm gonna do black today, but you know, you could use a dark, dark blue. I've got colors on hand too. You can use colored pens, you know. Draw your carrot with orange. Draw your cucumber with green. Doesn't have to all be black all over the place. Different options. So there's some Sharpie types. I also have, these are very popular, Micron pens, Pigma micron pens you can get them in different sizes super popular waterproof stetler i've got a stetler here they usually do pencils but they also do pens that's a permanent fine tip pen these are good too oh that's upside down look pen technical drawing pens in different sizes these are permanent that would be a good pen to use if you're not sure if the pen that you have is waterproof, do a little test. Scribble a little on a piece of paper, put some water on it after, a, maybe let it dry a minute, then put some water on it, see if it's waterproof. All right, what else do we have nearby? We've got paint for later, some watercolor paint. This one's just from Amazon, Mei Liang. Cheap, colorful, nice little travel set. I've got one paintbrush. I, I don't need to be fancy with this. One paintbrush is fine. Kind of a thinnish, thin paintbrush. Not too big, not too thin. Medium. That'd be okay. I've got my water off to the side. I've got my paper towel off to the side here, too. That's really all the supplies we need. I'm looking around. Nope, that's, that's all I have. Roll up the old sleeves. Um, so, pencil and eraser. I'm going to probably draw directly with pen right off the bat because I like to do kind of a messy style. I also want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. So if I start drawing in pencil, it's going to be very light. I'm going to probably right away start with a pen, but you don't have to start right away with a pen if you're not comfortable, but it is a messy style. 
let's have a little closer look at my messy patent pending style. Um, all the glare is, oh, there you go, okay, the glare. See how like the edge of the cucumber is all scraggly, messy, double, triple, quadruple lines, top of the rutabaga or the turnip, messy, around the radishes, super messy. Look at that onion, scribbly, lines going everywhere. The whole thing, very messy. So you don't have to have perfect pencil drawings to start with. If you're brave, just go right for the pen, right for the pen. Any like rogue or stray lines, no one's gonna notice them at all. Let's have a look. And keep in mind, you can put any vegetables anywhere that you want. Maybe you want to just do three vegetables per page instead of like five or more. Maybe you wanna focus on one giant vegetable literally anything you want. Um, completely different vegetables. Like, you know, you want to do a, a potato. You could do a potato. I don't have one, but you definitely could. Think about your favorite vegetables. Throw throw some fruits. Do, do one vegetable, one fruits. Literally anything you want to do. I, I want to challenge you to do something unique in your composition. I don't want to see like a perfect carbon copy of mine. I want everyone's to be just slightly different from mine. I challenge you to do something just a little different, whether it's the position or the size or the type or the color. You could do a, a red pepper, a green pepper, a yellow pepper. All right, let me, let's, I'll just put this here for a second. Let's focus on these vegetables example. A carrot, how easy is a carrot? You can have a nice fat carrot all the way down your page. You can have a short stumpy carrot. You can't mess it up, it's a carrot. So I'm gonna have sort of um, oval, a messy oval as the top of my carrot right here. So you can kind of see the pen a bit better than if I was doing pencil. But if you feel like doing pencil first, go for it. So here's a messy oval. There's many lines going on there. It's all good. From that oval, I'm gonna make a nice long carroty shape. Yours could be kind of a crooked carrot. You know how sometimes they, you know, hit a rock or something underground and have to kind of go all weird shapes. Any, literally any shape carrot, pointy tip, rounded tip. Mine's pretty fat, pretty fat and then gets real thin, any shape you wanna do, literally. And then my carrot top, well, his carrot top got snatched off, so he's just got some little sprouties left. Nothing much going on there. Messy, messy lines, wiggly lines. Yeah, I think doing it straight, straight away with pen is helping you see it a bit, a bit, bit better. Let's give our carrot a bit of texture with some horizontal messy lines. It could be like a clumpy, a clump of lines. It could be just back and forth messy lines. You'll be able to see these like texture lines better if it was plain paper, but we're still going to do it. Even though my paper has musical notes on it, I'm still going to add these lines here and there. There could be like thicker, darker little sections, but all kind of horizontal. Horizontal is just how the texture of a carrot is. And then I'm picturing each of these vegetables the light source is coming from kind of the top left. If the light was shining from this direction, the right side of my carrot would be darker. So I'm gonna add extra scribbles along this right side here, just literal messy. It could be ziggy zaggy scribbles. It could be circly, swirly swirl, 
little zigzag scribbles. Just make the right side darker. Really let loose. Let your hand kind of spaz around. This whole side of my carrot is just darker. You could do a little bit of darkness kind of along that edge, you know, where the top and the, the side meet, a little bit scribbly there. There could be a shadow there. Could be a bit of a shadow along the right-hand curve of my carrot. Maybe a little shadow under the little, little spready stem. Here we go. Carrot is done. The easiest shape. It's messy. Yours is gonna look completely different. Even when I paint these, these two will look completely different. It's all good. All right, that's a carrot. Let's do, I'm gonna do the beat in the middle next. Why not? Um, you know, plan where you want things. If you're planning to do asparagus like me, you know, leave some room. If you're planning on doing something completely different, leave some room appropriate to that shape. I'm gonna do my, the body of my beat, the beat itself kind of lower than middle, but it could be smack right in the middle if you want. Let's go right here. There is a loose, 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 messy circle. I did several lines. This line went way out here for no reason. That's okay. Loose, messy circle. Whoop, losing my lid. Give them a little, a rooty, a little rooty down here, a little tendril coming down. Long, short, extra curly, or pretty straight. Either way, mine's a little crooked. That's okay. Every beat is unique. Um, some lovely leaves are on my beat. I've got one, two, three, four, four leaves. You could just do two, you could do three, you could do seven. Any number of beetroot leaves. Let's go, I'm gonna go three. What do you think, three? I'm gonna go out here, one. Probably a nice tall one, two. Maybe a little cutie over here, three. So just some stemmy, stemmy messy lines. Coming out, sprouting out, I've got three. They're messy. They're curving out a little bit. They could be straight. And then we, we leaf it up. My leaves are kind of wiggly around the edges. So we're gonna start a little, give, leave a little space so that it has a bit of a stem before the leaf starts. Um, kind of reminds me of an oak, an oak leaf, and that is kind of rounded little lobes. And these lines could crisscross each other. This, this leaf outline I'm doing is full out, going right on top of the stem lines I just made. That's okay. I'm going around it two, three, four times. Look at that. Kind of reminds you of an oak a little bit. So this one's a little bit maybe like bigger lobes. This one has a little bit like smaller lobes. It's all good. And then I'll do another one. I'll have this one kind of nested behind this guy. And they don't have to be the same. Every leaf is different. And then this guy's gonna be a little smaller. So let's do it like this. Messy, multiple lines. And I'll add a few, a few veins, a little bit of veins coming from that middle stem going outward. Not a lot. We can do more veins with the paint itself. So just a few veins kind of sprouting out from that middle stem. Could be like a, a Y shape vein 
or just a single line. But uh, yeah, so even here I have some veins in pen, but then I added m even more veins with just paint. Nice round, fat, juicy beat. I did add some texture lines along my beat, but to give it that round feeling, you have to curve, curve your lines as you go back and forth, curvy, curvy lines will give it that sense that it's a round object. Just a little bit here and there. We're gonna get a lot more texture when we add the paint itself. Um, and I will also scribble on the right, the right side, because that's the shadowy side. Extra scribbles back and forth, up and down, circles, zigzags. The more you scribble, the darker it'll become. We'll scribble along that little rooty. Um, we could do a little scribbling on the leaf on the like right side, but not too much. I didn't do too much there. Just a little. Maybe, well, maybe if there's like a really dark little overlap area, a leaf is overlapping another leaf, maybe a little extra scribble in there. Wherever it might be darker. Along the bottom, yeah, bottom for sure, bottom and side. Look at it, it's already looking more like a 3D shape with just a little scribble. We haven't even added color. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Little rooty, he's a cutie. Let's do, I think I'm gonna go um, little, little chili peppers, little cute little spicy peppers on this side next. It could be one, it could be two, it could be whole pile, it could be, um, Shriveled up dried ones, could be a whole nother shape, whole nother color, whole nother vegetable. I've got two of these peppers crisscrossing each other. Let's go sort of like a carrot shape again. Could be a pointy tip, could be a rounded tip and work with the area you have. So maybe you Maybe you have less room, maybe just do one. Maybe you have more room, do a whole bunch along the bottom. Got a little stemmy, little, little tiny stem, nothing fancy. Maybe it's curved, maybe it's straight. There's a messy little, little pepper. I'm gonna scribble along the bottom, along the right. A little darker. There we go. That's that's the drawing of the pepper. That's all we need to do. Do you need to first pencil that in before you do the pen? I don't think so. Just go right for the pen. I'll do another one behind it, crisscrossing it, if you want, if you have space. stem and scribble along the bottom. Oh, maybe where the two crisscross each other, this one would have a shadow falling on this one. So a little extra scribble right in there. Mm. Darken that. Now we get a sense of depth. There we go. Two little, I'm going to call them jalapenos or any kind of little, little pepper. There. Let's do a lovely couple of asparagus spears. These guys here. I like the little purple tips. Um, so I'm gonna do two. You could do just one, you could do three. Mine are a little bit curvy. So let's go, and they could be thick, Thin, you know there's such a variety in asparagus when you buy them in the store, or sometimes I go wild asparagus picking. Sometimes you find real fat ones, sometimes little thin ones. Any width that you want. So I just did the basic outline. Um, kind of reminds me of a pencil, like a straight bottom, and then a pointy tip, 
a, it's a weird looking pencil. And then I'll do another one behind it. Just a basic outline for now. Then we'll add those little, um, I guess they'd be like buds, right? Because if you let the asparagus keep growing, like in the ground, it would have branches and leaves and flowers and be a full out plant. Okay, there's a couple of spears. They're crossing. And what would I call these shapes? Kind of like um, leaf shapes, these little buds. They're the shape of a leaf. So at the very tippy top, there's a little collection of what, seven or so. And then as you go down the stem, they're, they're more spread apart and it's kind of like staggered going down these little bud leaf shapes. So at the very tippy top, make sure there's one like the leader. There's the lead bud. And then like a little, little friend. Here's another little friend. Like a leaf shape. Give this guy a friend. And they're a little bit overlapping. There's not really a wrong way to do it. Okay, let's have a little look. Yeah, like a little collection of little leaf shapes touching kind of overlapping a little bit but then further down at a certain point just not a grouping but just kind of staggered right side left side going down 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 so i'll do a little leaf guy here right side there's one on the left off to the side they're kind of like boom 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 how many more? Maybe one more. Because then the, the rest of the asparagus spear is pretty straight, flat. And then I could just re-outline the rest of him, make it a little messier. What a funny thing to say. Make it messier. Yeah, even these ones that you have up here, make them a little messier. Scribbly. I'll do the other guy. And then, I mean, that one goes behind there. And then mess it up a little bit. Are they perfect? No. This one's chonky in the middle, thin at the end. Just scribble out of more. Make it like a distracting amount of scribbles and people don't know what's going on. Okay, that's pretty good. I will also do a little bit of shady scribbles on the right side. Again, the right side of all the vegetables because I'm assuming they have the same light source. It just makes sense. And I mean, some of these little buds could have a little scribbly shadiness on the right side. Where the, where the two spears cross over each other. You know, the behind one is gonna be darker. A little darker scribbles. There we go. Yeah, I'm not mad at those. And then uh, a beautiful whole clove of garlic, whole bulb of garlic. Yeah, clove is the individual. Bulb is what I meant. And you gotta work with the space you have. So I have a little bit less room here than say I did over here. So maybe maybe this one's a little smaller. Maybe, you, maybe you've run out of room because your asparagus took over the whole page. That's okay too. What would you call that shape? <laughs> Bulb shaped? <laughs> um, pumpkin, like a pumpkin. Big fat pumpkin with a little pointy tip. My bulb of garlic. And then, yeah, to show that there's um, a texture of the cloves bulging, curvy lines. Curvy lines are key here. Let's 
Let's go right here. Like a, the letter U right in the middle here. Messy, messy. And then some more curves right in here. Maybe your bulb is even wider than mine, so you can fit in an extra row of curvy, curvy lines. Yeah, that's quite pumpkin-like, I think. And I've got some little sprouty, rooty hairs from the very middle here, just wiggly squiggles, some straight, some not straight. Messy scribbles. Mine's mine's not even symmetrical. <laughs> That's okay. All right, I will add some more shady scribbles along the bottom. Extra scribbles on the bottom, extra scribbles on the right. There we go. And I've done one whole page of drawing. And of course, if you're still on, say, the third vegetable, hit pause, hit rewind. You don't have to be at the exact same pace that I'm doing. I draw and paint a lot. My hands, my brain naturally works a little faster in that regard. So don't feel bad that you're even on, say, the first drawing, because you're just working at your pace. And that's what I want you to do. So that's the first one. Um, you could pause on this screen right here as you fine tune the first page of drawings. All right, maybe you're going to fit all of your vegetables on one page and you're doing them smaller. That could be a thing too. All right, a whole other set of vegetables. We got the like turnip slash rutabaga, cucumber radishes, a lovely big onion, a lovely bell pepper, but literally switch it out for anything you want. Fruits, veggies, um, a lovely piece of cheese, anything at all. I'm going to do a nice big, I'm going to call it a turnip, big turnip, big circle. Look at that. Look at that beautiful circle. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to round it out even more with more scribbles. There we go. I'm going to point the bottom a little bit at a little pointy, pointy tip. But yeah, I go around several times. And the more you do it, the more round it seems. The first circle looked a little wonky. But if you average out all these lines I've made, that's a decent circle. I'm going to give them a little um, oval right up here. That's like the, like where you would have cut the stem, I don't know. And then to, again, give it that illusion that it's a round object, we'll add some texture lines going kind of back and forth, but dipping down, curve them. And I think the deeper the curve you go, the, the more round and fat it'll seem. So really curve those lines really deep. And we're gonna get more texture with the paint too. So there's some curvy lines. Short ones, long ones, a little scribble. They would have blemishes. They would have cuts in them, dents. And then again, I'm gonna scribble the right side, darker, scribbly, along the bottom too, bottom and side, darken. A 
And you can go as dark as you want. If you want to go really blackened on the one side, do it. If you're really enjoying the process of just making a mess. Let's say you're still struggling with loosening up, getting truly scribbly. Hold your pen a lot further back than you normally would. If you're holding your pen right now, right here, you're going to get a lot of precision, a lot of control, but that's not what we're going for. So hold your pen, scooch it all the way back, hold it right here and loosen the wrist and just like let it go wild. Like, oh, oh I went out of the line. Oh, oh, it's going all over the place. That's what I want. Loose, wild. This is art. This is not uh, rocket science. We're expressing ourselves with lines and scribbles. Look at that. <laughs> I dropped the pen. It was so loose. Look at that. There's a whole nest going on over here. There's lines that aren't even on the vegetable. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. How about little baby radishes? I've got two. You could do one. You could do three. You could do one with a bite out of it. Anything goes. These are more like wide, squashed down shapes. Let's go do it nice and wide. Wide oval with a pointy tip. Mm, I love a spicy radish. Love it. And I love when people cut radishes to make them look like cute little red and white mushrooms. That's adorable. Okay, give him a little, he's got a little messy, sprouty top. Nothing too wild. Messy, sprouty top. And I'll do another one. This one's on an angle. Work with the area you have. If you have a lot of open area up here, throw in, throw in three radishes. Do a cute little baby radish. And radishes are different sizes too, so they don't all have to be like super wide. You could have one that's a little rounder. So if you are doing it in pencil, Sarah, yes, definitely go over with some pen. We will be adding watercolor, so the pen will be a lovely contrast to our watercolors. There's a nice little radish. Again, I'll do messy scribbles on the right side, dark in the right side a little bit. Right and bottom. Not gonna go as wild on this one. There we go, a little darker on the right, a little darker on the right. All right, let's do a lovely cucumber. Mine's, mine's very curvy, yours could be straight. Yours could be uh, a cut cucumber and then some little cucumber slices drawn there next to it. Okay, I'm going to do, yeah, a little bit of a curviness. Kind of fill in this area here. Use up all this area. Whatever you have, use it up. It'll balance the composition if all your four corners are used up as much as you can. Here's a nice cucumbery shape. A little lumpy, that's all right. If we look very carefully, closely at my cucumber, I did add some bumpies, just some messy circles. I also added like a little, maybe that's where the stem was attached, a little boop. And then I did have some, a few stripies some cucumbers have a little bit of a stripiness to them where they, you know, where they attach to the vine. So here's a little, a little spot on the top. Maybe that's where it attached. Some stripies going up and down from that kind of area. And then just like loose dots, ovals, spots kind of all over. Big ones, small ones. Mine are not circles. That's for sure. They are not perfect circles. Oh, there's my light. There's my light. Look at those lumpy, bumpy dots. Just 
just gives it more texture. I mean, we could have some bumping off the side too. This looks like a cucumber that wants to be a pickle. I'm sure there are cucumbers that are predestined to be pickles. Okay, that's pretty good. Not too many, a little bit more. <laughs> I said that all in the same breath. Not too many, oh, a little more. And again, I'm going to extra scribble the bottom, I'm gonna extra scribble the right side. Even if it covers up some of your dots, some of your spotties, some of your warties, extra scribbly. Okay, I'm happy with that little, little pickling cucumber. Cute. All right, we're almost done with the veggies. Uh, a nice big, would that be a, a yellow onion? Kind of reminds me of a yellow onion. Could be a, a red onion, depending on what color you paint it. Nice purple. Nice big circle. Take up a lot of the room that you have left. Use the negative space. There's a circle, loose circle. It does have like a little bit of a nubbin on the bottom for the, the little root tip. A little nubbin on the bottom, a couple of rooties, a couple of rooty scribbles. And the top has like a little tuft of that papery, papery dry stuff. But a big, nice round onion. Love it. I did add oniony stripies along. So in the very middle, they go straight down. But as you work your way to the left and to the right, you have to curve your lines to make it seem like a round object. So that's a, a different way to make it seem round. Here we did horizontal curving lines, but here they are vertical. So the middle one is straight, straight up and down. And they all start at the very tippy top and they all join at the very, very bottom. Curving, curving more. Mine are messy, yours can be messy. Mine are not evenly spaced, that's okay. And I'm gonna, again, scribble, scribble to my heart's content along the right and along the bottom. more more 3d that's pretty good good lovely last last veggie shape a lovely bell pepper um i think in in england they call it a capsicum i think that's the word capsicum in in england um these could be the lumpiest, bumpiest things. All the all the bell peppers I've seen are all like weird lumpy shapes. So it doesn't have to be these exact shapes I'm gonna do. Make it even lumpier. So what would be this shape? <laughs> um, it reminds me of a tongue actually, the shape of a tongue. <laughs> or a, like a weird rounded heart. What would you call that shape? And then I've got like a, another lobe, I guess, of the pepper off this side, or like a, a real big elephant's ear, we could say, blobby shape coming off the side here. And again, another blobby shape off the side. It could get narrower at the bottom, it could get wider. I mean, this one's a little 
shift it this way. That's okay. Every pepper is different. And pepper stems, they are thin, but then they have like a knob on the top. Any blobby, knobby shape you want to do. Something like that. And again, we're going to add messy scribbles along all the, like each of these bits on the bottom. Each of these lobes gets a little scribble on the bottom. And then along the right side, I could even do a little on this right side. Right side of this one, right side of this one. Maybe not this one, this would be like in direct sun, so I'm gonna leave that one alone. But right in there. Maybe a little on my stem, this tiny scribble. There we go. Let's bring them back. Cute. There we are. Scribbly. And in black and white, they look really kind of good. And you could apply this drawing technique to like anything you want to draw. So I was already talking about like fruits and veggies, but what if you want to do like a bunny rabbit like this? That would be fun. All right, so we've got those. I'm gonna, where's my lid? Lid. <clears throat> All right, I'll give you another uh, minute if we're still fine tuning any scribbly veggies. Look at all of them as a whole. Do some of them seem lighter or darker or less scribbly or more scribbly? You could adjust. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm thinking my cucumber could use a little bit more. Just to have it kind of balanced. Um, maybe a little more over here. Everyone's is different. So you have to judge based on your own composition, not, not based on mine. Look at yours. Even like look at yours from a bit of a distance. So maybe hold them up, hold them up away from you at arm's length and think, oh, okay, maybe I need a little more here, a little more there, a little radish action here. There's some radish action. Do you need a few more roots, little rooties? Make any rooties longer, more blemishes. I'm happy with that. All right, <clears throat> let's look at colors. Um, yeah, so I've got lots of lovely purples and reds and warm colors, and then I've got beautiful greens for cool. And then I did throw in, like I, I was feeling like the composition needed some blue, so I threw in some blue on my cucumber. Got some nice yellow tones here, but you could literally paint this any colors that you want. If you want to do maybe less purple and more of a brown thing. So it's rutabaga instead of turnip. Carrots historically weren't orange. I think they started out like dark purple. You could do a purple carrot. You could do, there's, there's yellow carrots, bright yellow carrots, beautiful things. Um, it would be tough, but there is white asparagus. I would just do kind of very pale yellow tones, do white asparagus. It's just asparagus that's been grown in dark so that they don't get that chlorophyll going. Peppers, yellow, orange, red, green. Do a blue pepper if you, if you feel strongly about it. Any colors, white onion, yellow onion, purple onion, anything you want. Which one are we doing first? I guess we'll do the the first one first if that makes sense get your watercolors so i'm just going to use this set i showed it a little earlier may liang it's on amazon it's like 20 25 bucks nice little travel set i bring this everywhere i love it got my brush nothing fancy it's kind of ratty and frayed it'll get the job done 
I do like to use the lid for extra mixing. So let's say you don't have like as many colors. You have like one red, one orange, one yellow, one green. And I'm talking about, oh, use a purpley red. And you're like, I don't have that. You just mix two colors together, purple and red, and get a purpley red. If I'm talking about a yellowy brown color and you don't have that, just mix some yellow and brown together in the lid, on a plate, on an actual palette. All right, get your brush wet. I've got my, here's my little, my little water well off in the corner here. You do have to get your brush wet. We're gonna do the carrot first. Let's start with a nice simple carrot. I've got a variety of oranges. Um, maybe this kind of medium orange. You get your brush wet, you rub it, you rub it, rub it. I bring it to my mixing area, I add more water. Nice light orange. It's the consistency of juice. It's not like acrylic paint. It's like we're actually painting with some juice water. So it's not thick like acrylics. And when I am adding my orange to my carrot, I do want to leave a bit of a lighter, there's a light, lighter patch right here, and then darker here and here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of orange on the very left. Sometimes I'm in the line, sometimes I'm out of the line because the lines are so crazy. Who knows, who knows where the true edge of this carrot is? So here's a little, little orange down this side. Get some more orange. And then I'll put more orange on the right side. So like a wider stripe going down, much wider. So I have like a white plain strip right here. And I'll put some orange on the tippy top here too. There's a strip of white. It's lumpy bumpy. It's not perfectly straight. But we're not going to overwork the paper because this is very thin, just normal paper. So we can't keep brushing and brushing and brushing. It's going to start crumbling the paper. We're going to have holes in our paper. So literally, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do anything else to this for now. We will add some more when this is dry. We'll add some texture kind of going back and forth. Rinse my brush, get a little green, just a smidge of green, any green. Here's a lovely, this is a sap green. Put a little green on these little sprouties. And you could even like make new sprouties. Like even though there's not a pen line here, I can make a little sprouty here just because I wanted to. That's it. The carrot, the first layer of the carrot's done. Super easy. Let's do something very, very, very similar to both these peppers in that we're gonna leave a white gap and we're gonna leave a white gap on this guy. I'm gonna do red, but you could do any color pepper you want. So get some red going with some water. I bring it to my little mixy area, mix more water. So I'm gonna do, I'll do this one red, the top one. So I'll do a thinner little strip of red along the top. I don't know, is that left? And then I'll do more red. Sorry, left. Yeah, left, yeah. Topish, leftish. A little bit more red along the right, a little thicker band. But I'm leaving Leave a white gap, that's our highlight. And this is still just the first layer. We're going to darken it later. So it's okay that this is kind of pale. It looks almost pinkish because it's a little pale, but we're gonna add some more vivid red after. So yeah, that's all, that's all I'm gonna do for that guy. I'm gonna rinse my brush. You could do both of them red or orange or do a green one. So because this red one is still wet, when I do my green right next to it, I'm going to be very careful that my uh, greens, my green and red don't touch. So here's some green. 
I'm gonna do a little strip of green along the top. And then I gotta continue the green over here, a little strip, any shade of green. And then along the bottom, just a little bit wider. Skip over that red one, continue, continue. Leaving a white patch. Pretty pale, wishy-washy. And I'll put some green on my little stemmies, my two little stems. I'm gonna do a slightly darker green. If you have different colors of green, maybe a bit darker green or a bluier green or a, just something different. That's it. That's all we need on that. Look, they're already starting to seem 3D. There's a highlight, there's shadow. The color's starting to come into them. <coughs> Pardon me. Where's my drink? Okay, give that a little rinse. Let's do our nice bright beet. I've got purples in there, pinks in there, reds in there. The light's hitting it weird. There's also gappies. Look, there's white gappies where there's no paint. White gappies. So white gappies are what we want for a bit of a, like a highlight, a bit of a texture. I'm going to get some pink going. Let's say you don't have any pink. Do like a light red. Watery red. And when I add my paint, I'm going to still curve it. Curve it with the flow of the marks we made earlier. Here's some pink, little brush strokes, big brush strokes, wide ones, thin ones. But I'm, I want to leave some gappies. So there's some pink and still a lot of white, white gappies. Pink, get a little, little red, some darker, just something darker than that pink. And it could be right on top of some of the pink. It could be next to some of the pink. We could maybe focus some of the red on the, the dark, the dark side, a couple of stripes across. Everyone's beats are going to be different because in real life, beats are all different. Maybe a little red on this little rooty. Okay. Still, I'm still leaving some white gaps. We're not filling everything, everything in. Trying not to overwork the paper, just little dabs, little dashes and pull away. No, no scrubbing. Don't be scrubbing. You're gonna rip right through the page. And purple, purple's where this is really gonna come to life here. I have several purples. What's a nice purple, like a reddish purple? It could be a bluier purple. Let's see this. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Let it mingle with the reds and the pinks. Go around the, go around the outside, definitely in the dark um, scribbly bit. Lots of nice dark purple in there. On the little rooty bit. I could get several purples going. Let's try a little bit of this one. Oh, that's a nice one too. I'm focusing most of my darks along the right and along the bottom. Everyone's gonna look different. And my page, my paper is wiggling, warping, bumping up, but I expect that it is Thin, thin, thin. There we 
go, oh, don't, don't overwork it. Don't, don't stress it out anymore. Okay. I'm just going to stop. So there's still some white gappies left. Some pink, some red, some purples, all blended together. Good. Give that a little rinse. If you need some more time on any of these, just hit pause. Let's do the foliage of our little beet. Um, like a nice bright, 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 bright green. So like a greeny yellow. I've got a beautiful bright, bright green over here. Yellowy green, greeny yellow. Mix some green and yellow together. A little bit more. Okay, so something a little different this time. I'm going to outline one of the leaves with this bright green. And then I'm going to use water to kind of soften the edges. So here's some very bright neony green, yellowy green, loosely outlining my leaf outlined. Then I literally wash my brush, rub it, rub it, rub it, just get some water going. Water. And then you just paint some of that water where the plain paper and the paint meet and just kind of soften, soften the edges, water it down. So the middle of my leaf is staying pretty light, pretty light in the middle, darker around the edges. It's okay if like a lot of the paint kind of flows to the middle and it's not white anymore, but just as long as it's lighter, lighter in the middle is the goal. Okay, so we'll do that for all the leaves, whatever number of leaves you have. Outline it. Outline, outline, outline. Might as well, might as well outline them both. Get, rinse off your brush. Just water, blur it, smudge it, soften it. But don't, don't be rubbing really hard. Just light touch, We're just moving the water around slightly. All right, we'll let the leaves dry a bit before we add a little darker green, a little vein color. Yeah, let those dry a bit. If we say we did the, the purple veins now, it would just bleed and blur. We don't want that. All right, I'm thinking, let's move over to the asparagus. Again, with very bright green, bright, bright green. The little tips of the buds, I'm going to leave those blank for now. So right now I'm going to do this, the stem, the stalk green, and like kind of the base of each of these little leafy shapes. So not the whole leafy shape, not the whole bud shape. I want to leave the tip white. So I'm going to get that nice, bright, bright green I have here again. I'm going to paint the stems. You can go outside the lines. And sometimes I don't even fill in like the whole shape. Sometimes some of my shapes have white gaps. Okay. So there's some bright, bright green on my two asparagus stems. I'll have a little of that bright green on like the base 
of each of those buds, just a little smidge, just a smidge, leave the tips white because we want to have a beautiful purple tip. There's some bright, bright green, but I did add a little bit right, right along here of a slightly darker green, maybe a bluier emerald green, just little bits, little, little bits where the like shadows would be. So get a little, I've got some lovely emerald or like a viridian. Viridian would be nice. Get a little bit, a little bit on your brush and just dab it in the wet, bright green. And it'll bleed into the other green. And that's kind of what we want, wet and wet. So I'm doing it mostly near the base, the base of each spear. You could do a little bit kind of up a little higher, just to get a little variety in the green, but mostly near the bottom. Yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna do. Just a little, little of a slightly darker green. You could add some blue into green to make it a little darker for you. But for now, I'll leave all these little tips white for now, for now. The second coat is coming. All right, let's do our last first coat. If you're if you're following along, pale, yellowy brown, like maybe like ochre. If I had to call that a color, maybe an ochre, like a yellowy brown. If you don't have ochre, you could do yellow plus a little brown in it. And mine's coming from the top and going down. Just kind of wispy, not fully filled in. Wispy lines cascading down. Because I want my garlic bulb to be mostly light white. So there's just a smidge, smidge of light ochre, yellowy brown on the top, and then from the bottom going up, pinky, purple, could be, um, I guess you could do like black grayish, if you don't want to do like a pinky purple. What do I have? I've got, got some purples from before. Oh, like a, could be a red, could be a red, could be a brown. wisping it up from the bottom, up, following those curves, wisp, wisp, wisp. And then I did put a little bit of color in my little rooties, a little bit of purple, or it could be the ochre, just a little splash of color in your roots, a couple of squiggles. Okay, so these look nice, but we want to deepen them, darken them, right? So we're going to add a second coat to everything, but sparingly. We don't want to overwork this paper, thin, thin paper. Look at, our, look at our carrot there. We need some brighter orange. We could add some red into your orange to deepen it a little better. Good. So we don't want to paint on that highlight. Leave the highlight alone. I'm going to add some of this lovely orange along the edge again. Going on down there. Some lovely orange on this side too. So similar to what we did before, but a little bit less. So we can still see what we did before. Brighter orange. And I'm also going to add horizontal brush strokes going across. So there could be thick ones, thin ones, long ones, short ones, just to give it more carroty texture. 
and it doesn't even have to follow the pen lines we did. I've got pen lines that have paint on them, pen lines that don't have paint on them. Right across that highlight too. You can go on the white part in this particular case. As many or as few as you want. Whoops, don't go under there. There we go. So it's just a little bit more vivid. Um, it's hard to tell in this lighting because the light is really bleaching out that medium tone that I have. I can still, like to my eye, I can still see that medium tone that we first painted in addition to the dark tone, but I think the light's really bleaching it out. That's too bad. But it looks more vivid now. Beautiful. So that's that's the carrot. The carrot is Dunsies. I mean, if you wanted to throw in a little bit more green and his little topper, if your green was a little pale. A little bit more green there. There we go. Now she's done. Good. Where did we go next? I think we went peppers next. So we want to do kind of the same thing. Deepen it, darken it. Just rub your red a little, a little more, get more pigment going. A little redder. It's messy, it's lumpy. I, can, I think you can see, yeah, you can see the white, you can see that medium tone, kind of a pinky red, and then the red red on top. Putting one on top of the other really helps redden it. Mm -hmm. That's a word. I'll do the same for the green. Again, being careful not to have my green and red wet paint touch each other. So just go very carefully. Don't let them touch. Gaps are okay. You can leave a gap. If it means stopping a bleed from happening, leave the gap. There we go. Peppers are looking pepperier. I'm gonna add a smidge of blue to my green pepper. I do have a little smidge of blue in the like darkest, deepest shadow. Get a little blue of your choice. And right along the very, very bottom Smidge of blue, smidge. It just makes it seem even darker. Just a little. It just seems like dark, dark green. Beautiful peppers. Where did we go next? I think we went here in the middle. The beet. Yeah, I'm just gonna add just little bits of dark purple where it would be the darkest and you could throw a few a few for texture across but still following the curve or if you feel like you need more red in your beat you do more red i'm just going to go with purple little bits of texture across but my second coat, I'm just kind of keeping it to the to the right, to the bottom. I think I think what I have going on here is good. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Okay, and then yeah, those are dry. The leaves are dry, so we can do uh, pink veins or red veins or purple veins going up the middle. Your choice of color. And then has some veins coming off there. So think about the letter Y branching off in different directions. And I'm just using like the very tippy 
tippy top of my brush, like a few hairs of my brush, even though it's kind of a fat brush, just the tippiest point is thin enough to make some nice fine lines. Yeah, so I mean, these ones look a little bit smaller than these ones. That's okay. I'm going to give it a wash, a little rinse. I will add a little bit of darker green to my leaves just to give them some variety. Darker green than what I had before. Maybe, maybe this one. A little bit of darker green. Kind of around the outer edges, I would say. Little bits here and there of darker green. It's okay if maybe some of the purple and the green touch and bleed. That could be a cool effect. Little bits maybe where it's kind of crossing over each other, might be a little darker, a little darker green in there. Little bits, mostly around the edges. Yeah, it's there, it's messy. But the middles, the middles of the leaves are still pretty light. That's why I just went around the outer edge with the darker green. All right, we're getting there. Um, the the bud tips, we said we were going to make them purple. And yeah, my green is dry. No worries there. Um, purple or reddish, but just like the very tippy tips. A little smudge on each of these tips. Some could be lighter, some could be darker. And all the ones going down the stem, they need some little hit of purple. Yeah, so I went outside the lines. Whoops, not a problem. Okay, that's not bad, that's looking cute. Little purpley tips. Looking like some spiky asparagus. And then the last little thing I'm going to do, I'm going to darken some of the purple at the bottom of my garlic bulb. Just a little darker with the purple. That's cute. That one is done. Now, um, I did add some splashes let's add the splashes all at the end we'll do that all at the end when we have both of them complete so let's put that guy here to dry let's move you over Boom. okay we'll do this one um you know what'd be nice let's take a little small break and i'll show you some Upcoming events with me before we get started on this guy here. Upcoming events. So the next one, uh, what's the date today? Today's the 17th, 24th, October 24th, in exactly one week. Next Thursday, another free event. I know, right? If you've been enjoying this style, this event, you're going to love next week's event because it's the same exact style. And it's also a music paper too. <laughs> I was just like in this like groove of doing art on sheet music. So I made this second one. It is called Playful Octopus. We are going to premiere the video uh, right here next Thursday, same channel, same time, except this one's not going to be live. I'll be away, but I've pre-recorded it for you and you can do this adorable octopus. And you'll see in the recording next week when it airs, 
I added a little trumpet in his hand. It's super cute. You could add a clarinet. You could add a trombone. You could add a cymbal, um, tambourine. Wouldn't that be adorable? And it goes with the music theme. So tune in on this channel to watch this premiere next week at 6.30. Free, free events. If you want an email reminder, sign up on our website. Okay, then I'll show you some paid events that are coming up. And we're getting into Christmas time. Sleepy Puppy, here it is. This is going to be a Zoom event. So you get tickets on our website. It is stippling. If you'd like to try something new, stippling might be your thing. Tiny, tiny dots. The whole image is tiny, tiny dots. So I use um, the same pen that I'm using today, this pen. So you get a ticket on our website for Sleepy Puppy and you get the full recording of it included that you keep forever. So you can do it um, next year. You could do it several times and give them out as gifts. You get to keep the recording forever. So that's Sleepy Puppy on Monday, the 28th of November. Then we're getting into December already. December 1st. Do, do, do. Here it is. It is watercolor and Sharpie on paper. And I called it the Holy Family. So this is a paid event. Tickets on our website. You join me for the Zoom. I walk you through this. And you get to keep the recording forever. The Holy Family watercolor and Sharpie. Very beginner friendly. Perfect for Christmas. December 1st. Tickets on the website. Then after that is another free, free right here on YouTube Live. And this one will be live. You're gonna love it. If you've been painting with me for a while, you know I love butts. Yes, I said butts. <laughs> this one's called Nativity Butts. It's gonna be free December 8th, right here on YouTube Live. With me, Chris. Join me for that one for free. This one's in acrylics on a canvas, you could adapt it to be watercolor on paper or acrylic on paper. It doesn't have to be canvas. Join me free YouTube Live December 8th. If you go to our website, all the free events also are on our website and you can get your free ticket. Just click and then you'll get the email reminder for all of our free events. Um, what's after that? I'll show you a few more. I don't want to bore you with all the no, it's not boring. It's exciting to see stuff coming up. This cute tortoise. This one's called Your Gifts Are in the Mail. It is pen and watercolor. It's a ticketed event on Zoom. Get a ticket on our website. Same pen we use today, plus watercolor in that same messy style. Monday, December 12th. Okay, and then this one is... Oh, does it go this way? I mean, it could go anyway. It's a festive Zen doodle. That's what it is. Um, I'm not sure if we have this on the website yet. Maybe this is a sneak peek. Uh, Monday, December 22nd, pen plus watercolor. Tickets on the website. Let me show you, I promise, just two more. Just two more, and then we'll get back to our scheduled program. Christmas Calico, Monday, December 15th, mixed media. We've got acrylic, we've got watercolor, we've got marker, we've got it all. Christmas Calico on a canvas, mixed media, December 15th. Last one, I promise, another free event right here on YouTube Live. Get a free ticket on our website to get your email reminder. This is Boxing Day, Boxing Day, December 26th. Da, 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 da. Look how cute that is. I called it cozy custom sweaters. So on Boxing Day, you get your whole family together. You gather around the TV or the laptop with your paint and everyone can make their whole family as a sweater. You can share a canvas, you can each have a canvas and make them custom to each member of your family. So this is this is my family plus, plus pets. You could put, you could put a dog sweater you know, it doesn't have to be a sweater with dogs on it. It could be a dog-shaped sweater. 
for your dog. So Boxing Day free event, make your own custom sweaters and I'll walk you through that. All right, that's every everything that's coming up. Oh, and then there's gonna be more in the future, of course. <laughs> okay, um, so let's get going on these veggies. So I'm gonna, I'll start in the middle. Why not? Similar to our beet, pinky, reddy, purples, leaving some gaps. I'll do the same colors I did before. So I'm gonna keep my pinks and purples and reds to the top half of my turnip. There's some pink. Top half or top third or top two thirds. There's some pink. Let me get some red in there. Variety is nice, a little red. Let them mix and mingle and touch. White gaps, definitely have some white gaps. Okay, there's some red. Purple, get some purple in there too. And I'll focus my purple kind of on the dark side, the right side here. Curving that shape, the illusion of a round object. A little more red. A little more purple. Yeah, looking shiny. There's white gaps. There's colors bleeding into each other. And then brownie tones, pale ochre, lighter brown. I'm gonna use, yeah, I'll use some ochre first. Curving my brush strokes, leaving white gaps. Same rules apply down here. Bit of a Bit of a darker brown, chocolatier brown on the dark side, right side, a little darker. Get some wisps of the darker brown in amongst the ochre, give it some texture, give it a curve. White gaps are happening. There we go. Looking turnipy. Um, that little stem nubbin at the top is brown. A little ochre, a little brown. Nothing wild. But yeah, curvy, curvy, curvy brush strokes. Don't overwork it. Don't rub, rub, rub. That's lovely. Yeah, looks looks very rounded. Okay, um, I mean, we've got, kind of work our way around here. We've got radishes, red or pinky red. What do I got? It's kind of a pinky red. And we want to leave a spot of highlight. So we need to leave a patch that is white. So I'm thinking the patch of white should be kind of near the top left of each shape. So what if you just kind of loosely outline that patch, just a blobby outline, then the rest of your radish can be pinky red, but leave a blobby patch of white. Doesn't have to be round, doesn't have to be a shape, it just has to be there, a blobby shape of white. A white patch. Okay. 
And remember, this is still just, oops, this is still just the first, first coat. The first coat can be kind of pale. And then I put uh, two colors of green in the stem, light green, dark green. Let them mix together a bit. Here's some light green. And these wispy stemmy bits. Okay, rinse that off. Get a slightly darker green, any shade. Put a little of that in there. Let them mix a little. Yeah, that, that's it. Bit of light, bit of dark. Cute. And our pickling cucumber kind of went light green into a medium, really into blue. I wanted to, I needed some blue in here. It just screamed add a little blue. So here's some very, very light green. It could be yellow and green mixed together. The top of my cucumber. And then this is medium. Maybe it's like a hunter green or a hooker green or a viridian green. No, I don't like that one. Let's go like this one. Oh yeah, that's the one I want. This is like an emerald or like a viridian. And I'm letting some of this touch some of that yellowy green and it's making a whole new shade of green. It's okay if there's white gaps on your cucumber, that could be like the lumps and bumps. Okay, getting into the bottom here, I'll grab some blue, like literally straight up blue. We're not going for like super duper realism here, if you hadn't noticed. Blue on a cucumber, what? You could put purple on the cucumber if you wanted. There you go. So it's kind of like a bit of an ombre effect, light into emerald, into blue. And they're, they're touching, they're moving, they're not really staying put where I told them to stay put. That's okay. All right. Um, let's do this lovely, uh, I forgot the word, onion. <laughs> onion. So in my onion, I left some scraggly bits of white as the highlight. So on the kind of upper left again, so this is where the light would be hitting it, I didn't fully fill it in. There's white patches. But as we're filling in our onion, make your brush strokes vertical up and down go with the flow same with these ones we went with the flow of the vegetable you have to do that here brush strokes will be coming down and gathering at the bottom to give the illusion of roundness so i'm going to get some very light ochre or like a yellowy brown lots of water so in this kind of zone don't fill it in completely. Leave white patches on purpose. But then near the um, right and the bottom, darker, more filled in. And again, just we're barely wisping on the page. We don't want to rub our page too much. Not too, too much water, just kind of one and done. Get it done and then stop playing around with it. I'm going to add some darker brown along the very bottom, along the right. Nice, rich brown, like chocolate, nice chocolatey brown. Um, umber, umber if we're getting technical. Maybe a Van Dyke brown. Yeah, so here, lots of white, little bit of that ochre going on. Um, if you want it to seem more like of a yellow onion versus like a white onion, 
you get some yellow going on. Got a little cad yellow here. Brush in a tiny bit of uh, yellow, just very light little wisps of yellow. Let it blend with some of these ochres and browns. Yeah, slight, slight little hit of yellow on there. Barely there. Okay, and then what do I got here? A beautiful orangey, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. Hmm, I'm gonna start with the yellow. Get a nice bit of yellow. So we're picturing the, the light source would be hitting like this tippy top of this lobe with some yellow right here. That little node right here with a little yellow. Even maybe a little hit on the last one, just a bit of yellow there. And then I'm gonna do orange. Light orange, dark orange, whatever, whatever kind of orange you want. And I will let the orange and yellow touch a little bit. I'll go all the way down with the orange. I'll go to the very bottom with the orange. The yellow, yeah, the yellow bleeds with the orange a tiny bit, but it's mostly staying right there. And then I'll get some red. Get some nice red and go with the very, very bottom with the red. Let it blend in with the orange. Wherever it's dark, so along the right side, a little red. And it's blobby, it's bleeding, it's running. Sometimes I get a little water on the brush, just water, and just kind of purposely smudge the two colors together with some extra water, but not too much. Not too much, remember. Here we go. So again, it's, it's a little bit of like an ombre effect, gradient yellow into orange into red. It looks fire. It looks fire, that's all I can say about that. That's kind of cute. A little green stem. Let's do a little green stem. I'm going to do my bright green. Make sure my green doesn't touch my orange. Here's my green stem. I'll put a little, little bit of dark green, wet and wet, along the shady side of my stem. A little dark green. So now my stem looks a little 3D. Yeah, so here we have a little bit of light green with some dark green just dabbed in, dabble it in. Oh, it's looking cute. Very cute. Okay, we are going to do second coats. That's pretty dry. My turnip is good. So similar to our beet from earlier, just slightly darken, you know, the darkest bits, the purple side, the brown, still following that curve. I have a few kind of interspersed throughout, but I'm mostly just focusing on the darkest side. Purple, you could put more red in there. Yeah, just really deepen it. And then I'll do some brown as well. Because like even, even that dark brown that I added, as it dries, gets lighter. Can't hurt to get a little bit darker layered on top. More texture. Just a little bit. Don't don't overwork it. Just a smidge here. Now 
Um, I mean, while I have the brown, I can add a little more to my onion. Barely, barely, barely. A little bit on my onion. I want to keep that nice light side light. I'm not going to touch it at all. Just some on this dark side. Good. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take too much. A few little strokes to finish it off. These are looking pale. We want a nice darker red. Darken the bottom, darken the right side. But I'm not fully covering up that medium tone. Leave some of that behind. But now my radish is looking more, more healthy. He was looking kind of pale. And then if you really want to set these radishes off, get a little purple, a little purple and do like the very edge of that and the bottom, just where it's the absolute darkest, little purple to really set off your radishes. Look at that, they look more, I wanna crunch into them. Um, I'm happy with how my radish tops are, so I don't think I'll add more green. But if you felt like you wanted to add more green to the radish tops, you can. And then what's left? We need a little, little more on the, I wanna say pickle, but cucumber. A Little bit more, we can get a little bit more blue or dark green, get it a little deeper. But if, if you're not loving the blue, if it's too fantastical for you, you can just go with a dark, dark green. I'll get a little dark green. I could even like do little speckly spots, do some little speckly spots on your cucumber for texture. Light green, dark green. Get some light green, medium green, just for texture. Yellow, could speckle it with some yellow. I like that, I'm not mad at that. Maybe a little more green. Okay, that's looking more vivid. And really it's just the, um, the pepper. It's, we did do it quite recently. Mine's still a little damp, but I just, I'm gonna add a little bit more dark red, but it's pretty much set. I think we achieved a kind of darker shadow with having the red in there to begin with. But I just put a little smidge more. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's good. Well, let's bring back the first one. Okay, so have have them both in front of you. Look at them. Think about, you know, do you want to get more yellow involved? You need more more orange. You could do a third layer of certain things if you're very gentle. I might. So I'm looking at mine. I'm thinking I want a little yellow in my garlic bulb. But that's my choice. If you don't feel like yours needs yellow, you don't need to have some yellow. Just a few strokes just to really set it off. Maybe you're looking at the whole thing as a whole and you're thinking, oh, this orange is more vivid than say this orange. So let's add a little more to this. Or maybe this red is more vivid than say over here. And you wanna add a little more over here. It ain't over till it's over. I'm gonna add a smidge of purple to this pepper. Cause we did add a little blue to the pepper, but I could add purple to this guy. He, he deserves some extra love. What else am I looking at? Maybe you feel like you want to have um, darker asparagus tips. Let, let's try that. I'm gonna get a little bit purple, get it a slight bit darker. Just the tippy tips. 
And then when we're done fine tuning, we're gonna do the funnest part. Funnest, is that a real word? Most fun part. Yeah, that's looking more vivid. Um, what else, what else, what else? Smidge more yellow here. Scooch more yellow here. In here. Yeah, overall, I'm pleased with that. Very pleased. Okay, I'm going to move. Move this. Move this. Move all that. The best part, in my opinion, is splashing them with some paint after. Let's have a look at these. Now, it's not for everyone. You don't have to do it. I just adds like a little something extra. There's little artistic splashes. So on this one, I've done blue and orange and yellow. This one I've done green and yellow and orange. Um, any colors, anywhere, any amount. Could be a lot, could be a little. Absolutely your choice or not at all. Clear away anything you don't want covered in paint. I mean, I might move the laptop a little further. Here they are. Um, watercolor does come off with soap and water. Um, if you want to put down like a tablecloth or something before you get it on your table, it will come off as long as you don't let it like sit and stain. That's no good. Watery paint, really watery. If you have like a slightly bigger brush, that's ideal. Should I get a slightly bigger brush? All right, I'll get up. I'll get up and get a bigger one. What do we got? Mm -hmm. This is a oh, yes. Here we go. Boom. Look at this bad boy. I'm gonna hold a lot of watery paint in this one. All right, get it good and wet. I'm gonna start with a beautiful green. Let's do green. That's a lovely color to start with. Goes with the theme. Gorgeous green. Lots of water. Load up the brush. Full of painty water. Um, several ways to do this. So I'll show you th three ways. Three ways to do this. The first is just lightly tap your finger with your paintbrush. Little speckles will happen. Little mist, little guys. It's okay if it lands on the background, on the vegetables themselves, on the table within reason. Okay, so there's some little ones, little baby ones. If if you're just starting out with splashing, maybe maybe that's the perfect amount for you, just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get a different color for effect. Um, orange, orange, lovely orange. Lovely orange, fill up my brush. Um, these will be more energetic, bigger, um, wilder. I'm not gonna tap my finger. I'm just gonna hurl my brush towards the page and then I'm gonna stop, stop short. Like you're flicking a magic wand. Boom, look at that. Just like a curvy shape, boom. You could go at an angle from the bottom, from the top, from the side. You can go like from straight up and down, boom. You can kind of aim, but not really. <laughs> Boom, there's a bunch of orange. I'm gonna do a little bit of purple in this style before I move on to a different type. Ooh, that was a big one. A little bit more. I like the purple contrasting with the orange. Um, you could do blue, you could do yellow. I'm going really wild this time because I just love doing it. <laughs> you can stop when you think you have enough. Okay, purple, good. Um, the last style of splattery dots, um, I didn't do them in this example. Um, again, it's not for everyone. Big ones, if we're talking like big splats, if that's something you wanna do, 
I'll show you how to do them. We'll do it on here. Like I'm talking big. So I get my brush wet. What color will I do? I'm going to do a lovely emerald green. Emerald green, different from the green I did before. Okay. Okay, really load up your brush. My brush is full of painty water. I'm going to go way up high with my brush beyond the camera, and I'm going to literally squeeze the paint out of my brush bristles, and it's going to come splatting down and make a big splat. And you can kind of aim, but you can kind of not aim. So let me go with, I'll try to aim for here. I'm going to stand up. I'm squeezing. Blop. Blop. Squeeze it again. And then there's paint on my hands. Flick it off. Flick it. <laughs> there's paint on the table. Soak it up. Okay, where else am I going to go? Ugh. Let's go over here. See if I can aim. Blop. Flick, flick. It's just going to go where it wants to go. Blop, blop, blop. Blop. Blop, blop. Let's go over here. Ooh. Flick, flick. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting a little wild, but I like that. Um, what else? What else? Blue? Oh, blue. Blue on orange, blue on red. Ooh. I like it. I just have fun with it. Some of you might be looking and thinking, oh, she's ruined it. No, I like it. To each their own. Let me clean this up a tiny bit. Beauty. Now, my pages are super wrinkly. Super wriggly. Even when they're 100% dry, they'll still be a little bit warped. Keep them in a nice portfolio. Keep them in a book. Um, I just get these art portfolio type things. Clear plastic sleeves. And just put all my art in it. Yeah, there was uh, Halloween stuff there. Keeps them flat and tidy. You could mount your pages on black paper like I've done. I think that really makes it pop. You could frame this behind glass. You could um, make little mini versions, put it on cards. That would be adorable. Thanksgiving card, a little late now. And I would love to see your versions, your finished paintings. So in the description, down below here, in the description down below, I've got uh, the link to our Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. I would love to see you join the group and post your veggies, maybe fruits, maybe other things in that group. Love to have you, very supportive group. And every Wednesday, I post a free tutorial in that group. I call it Watercolor Wednesday. Um, so it's about a 20 minute video every Wednesday to work on our, our, just our fundamental watercolor and drawing skills. I'd love to see you in that group if you're not already in it. So we're all done. I'm going to sign it. We got to sign it. Put some initials down here. You could sign both of them or just one of them. You could put the year, you could put the date, put your whole autograph. Let them dry flat so that those drippies don't break off. Um, any questions for me? Hit the live chat right now before we go or get into that Facebook group and ask me some questions. Anything at all. Kay Pad Padgett says that they love the pen and watercolor most of all. Me too. A little, a little line and wash, that's my fave. A little messy pen, a little messy watercolor. Any questions for me at all? Again, happy Thanksgiving to those in the States celebrating Thanksgiving today. Maybe time for a nap. Maybe. <laughs> uh, 
All right. The link of the group is in the description below here. I can also put it in the chat. Let's put it in the chat too. Um, but just below this video in the description should be, and I'll put it in the chat as well. No, that's not it. That's the link to this video. <laughs> that's so silly. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to get the actual link of the group. I just linked ourselves to this video. That's a little redundant. That's the, there we go. In the chat is the link to our Watercolor Lover Facebook group. All right, I don't see any questions. We did real good. We did that in, in the two hours. That's what I always plan for, like a two hour tutorial. And of course, this video is available on our channel forever, five ever. You can watch this next Thanksgiving or really anytime. Spring, summer, harvest time. You're welcome. It's not in the description. Interesting, because I definitely put it in there earlier. <laughs> Maybe I didn't hit save. I don't know. Okay. I will, I will fix that because I can edit the description after. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you in the Facebook group. See you on um, next Thursday. You can watch the octopus. Similar style. I know you guys can do it. If you can do this, you can make that octopus with me. Definitely. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.